What's Jim's opinion? It's Jimmy's opinion. Hey guys, Jimmy here. So I just finished Pollen, and I gotta say, I'm slightly disappointed, but overall I think the game was fantastic, and I'm gonna get to that in a bit. But if you look on Steam, the game is getting savaged by reviews and a lot of people that are apparently refunding the game and a lot of people downvoting the game and saying that it's another walking simulator. And I'm gonna in this video try and explain how it's not, how it's good and also include some of what the devs said about the game and some of the Steam reviews as well. Personally in my playthrough, I enjoyed it. I went in knowing that it was a walking simulator and it delivered. It was atmospheric, it was creepy. I felt lonely, it was dark, mysterious and intriguing. I wanted to pick up every note and read it. I wanted to know more and find out more all along. The puzzles were okay and the ending I think was a bit misunderstood and I'll get to that at the end of this. Now in one of the reddit threads, the dev himself, or one of the devs at least, said that he thought they were getting the game out to the wrong kind of people, or the wrong kind of people were picking up the game. And it's kind of apparent in some of the Steam reviews that this is true. One of the reviews says short, slow paced, zero challenge, clunky movement, terrible ending, not worth $25. Now I do agree a bit with the pricing, but yes it's short, most narrative exploration games are. If they were any longer it would affect the purpose of trying to deliver a short interesting story without you losing interest. It's slow paced. Yes, it sets tone and atmosphere for the game. You move slowly as you have a gigantic spacesuit on because you do. It's part of the gameplay. Zero challenge. Now the game isn't the Call of Duty, it's more of a gone home. You don't expect to be challenged, the challenge lies in uncovering the story and finding all the little bits. The short little puzzles of getting in between the doors as well only kind of serves to move the story forward. The only thing he got right is the price, it's a little expensive. I luckily got a review copy from the developer so my view might be a little skewed. Now the dev himself said here, we tried to explain on the text and video that we are a slow paced game but actually got criticism for being such. And we also got to the mixed review pool which kinda killed the sales. Most critique comes from the price ending and optimization. Now we'll talk about all that but firstly price. He says here for a two and a half year project with 12 people doing a niche game, they needed to keep the company rolling for that price. And also if you compare it to other VR experiences, it's pretty much on par. This person says it turns out to be a short walking simulator with a few puzzles in it. But why is that a bad thing? Obviously the game was designed to be a VR experience but what do people expect? That's exactly what the game is, a short walking simulator in space with a few story puzzles thrown in and it's good at what it does. A simple and predictable story, well maybe you didn't delve far into it at all. Although the ending is rather confusing it provokes some thought, maybe you were sent back to earth as a carrier, maybe you were mating with Karen, <laughs> you don't know. There are all these little notes that kind of explain the little thing and the ending is open ended and often people struggle with trying to think about what it might mean rather than being told. Now what the dev says in the thread here kind of explains what we've talked about so far. The negative reviews from people are people who like totally different types of games or don't get the ending. But the actual issue is the optimization. And looking through the thread there are a lot of people that says the game was running really slow, it was chugging, FPS drops and it was very, very poorly optimized with VR. I didn't play it with VR but I did notice some lo long loading and <laughs> uh, as you go from room to room and a few FPS drops. But if you watch my playthrough I kind of tried to edit around all that <laughs> so you didn't see what it was actually like. But yes, it was poorly optimized and that can only get better in time if they try and do some tweaking to it. Now I'm not completely satisfied with the game, it does have its problems but games have their problems, not every game is perfect and I'm not just being a fanboy here so let's go through some of the problems this game has. A lot of the items in the world at first seem interactable and it kind of in the end just tries to stretch the game time. I tried to break glass, carried screwdrivers around the world and it seemed a lot more interactive than it really is and a lot of it is meant to distract and confuse you. I tried sending the train with the data to HQ and speaking of HQ, <laughs> there are some people who are asking where did HQ go? Well they were probably destroyed in the storm when it cut off the comms and when you saw the entity explode or whatever at the beginning. Do you really need the game to tell you? Not being contacted by HQ makes you feel all the more alone and 
I just think that was a neat little thing that they did that was kind of like, I don't know, it doesn't spoon feed you and be like, the, the players say, oh, HQ uh, comms must be down. You kind of piece, uh, put two and two together and figure it out yourself. But yeah, the items stretch the gameplay and confuse you and um, yeah, after a while you figure it out and you're like, well, not much, not, you see about a hundred screwdrivers around and things like that. But yeah, I also felt that getting the keys were a bit too easy. And the keys were obviously the end game goal of the game to get the three colored keys, but they were just lying around. I missed the blue key the first time I was trying to figure out stuff. That was ridiculous because I had gone through the whole base and looking for this blue key and I missed it. I was trying to stop the fans by cutting off power to certain sectors. I tried going back in time to get into the cargo bay. I tried breaking glass in the com in the in the control room with the magnetic thing. All this was just stupid. <laughs> and I was thinking too much, but I liked that about the game. It made you think. It made you think. And it made me think when I went to bed at night and think about how I was going to solve the puzzle and how I was going to do this and that. And the next day when I booted up the game, I tried all these things and they didn't work. But, you know, they didn't work. So what? It made me think about it. And another one of the problems that the game had was its long, uh, irrelevant and unneeded ending. And... When I was looking at it, I was like, mm, it's probably made for VR and it's probably really cool in VR. And the dev himself said it was meant to be a VR mindfuck. And, a, you know, a reference to 2001 Space Odyssey. But <laughs> on my monitor, it just looked like a few patterns going around. It wasn't that interesting. And I think a majority of people actually did not play it in VR and saw that as kind of unnecessary. And I think a lot of people might have quit out before they saw the image of Earth and the space shuttle. And I think there, a comment by Digital Drew in my video uh, said that, you know, you might be the carrier of the entity going back to Earth. And I thought that was a pretty cool thing that I didn't really come to conclusion to because I'm an idiot. But still, it made you think about the ending. It didn't just spoon feed you the ending. It was open-ended and made you interpret things. And if you didn't go around the base finding the notes and reading the notes and little clues then you won't understand the ending or you won't have your interpretation of it so I think it was clever in that way and I think a lot of people just misunderstood it so all in all I think the game was good and the game was pretty awesome I had a fantastic ride you know it was really atmospheric and I enjoy just walking around a space station looking at stuff looking at books uh, picking up like chicken sticks and stuff it was great and um, that's what I expected and that's what I got and if we put everything into conclusion the reason why it's getting so many negative reviews and people are hating on it is that maybe they didn't understand what the game was before they bought it and maybe they were expecting something different or a different product and the second thing is the optimization it's poorly optimized that's something you can't escape from. Third, you know, it's the price. It's a little expensive. So, <laughs> I think they know what's wrong with it. And they can only try and fix these things by tweaking the optimization. Maybe having a sale and lowering the price. But the first one, it's something you really can't avoid. People just need to know what they're buying. So there you go. This has been my two cents on uh, the game and what I feel uh, went wrong with it and what I felt went right with it. I'd like to know your opinions, leave them down below and we can have a little discussion. I'm interested to see what people think about this because on Steam it seems like it's pretty much straight down the middle between positive and negative. So let me know and thanks for listening or watching and I'll see you in the next one everyone. Take care and peace out.